Good news, everybody. <laughs> the new ChatGPT image model API is out and it is awesome. It's kind of expensive, but it's awesome. And I think it's gonna unlock a whole range of possibilities for new apps and new businesses. So to test it out, I built this. It's called Decorate with Convex. You've probably seen apps like this before, but basically it allows you to upload an image and then use natural language to then edit that image and decorate your house. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through the entire process, how we built it and how you can do the same thing yourself in no time at all. So grab yourself a lovely cup of tea and let's get started. All right, so this is Decorate with Convex. Uh, once you've signed in, you can go ahead and select a file to upload. Let's uh, pick one of my living room here. Lovely. And then you can uh, choose to decorate it how you want. So I'm going to say something like uh, make the floor lava because who doesn't want to make their living room look like it's covered in lava? Right, so that might take like a minute or two because uh, the new ChatGPT image model does take a little bit of time. Uh, and we can have a look at some of the other ones that I've done. So I've taken my son's bedroom here. This is what it looked like before. And then I asked it to decorate it. Uh, let me embiggen it a bit so you can see it. Yeah, so it's uh, it's really quite nice. It allows you just to, it's, I mean, it's not perfect compared to what the original was, um, but it really does like, it gives you a nice sense of what it could look like. Let's have a look at another one. Um, took this house here, it's not my house. Uh, and I said to, to make it show what the house might look like with snow all over it. And it, and it was pretty faithful to the uh, to the house in that one, which is quite nice. Um, you can also choose to click this button, which will uh, download it. Well, it'll open up a new window, then you can right click and download it. And uh, let's have a look at a, another one. So, uh, this one of my front living room again that I did. Uh, you can tell it was Christmas time when I took this. Uh, and I said, please decorate it. It looks like a professional interior decorator designed it. So did a good job there. Okay, let's see. Is our, Oh, yeah, it's done. So uh, there we go. So that's what my house would look like if it was covered in lava. Good to know. Okay, so the app not only works on desktop, uh, but it also works on mobile as well. So I am going to just open the app up on here. And then I am going to, let me see, uh, let's take a picture over here. I've always wanted to know what this area here would look like if we had made it maybe a little bit more classy, I would say. So you can see immediately that uh, because this is a convex app, it's immediately synced. So I don't need to do anything to have it show up on my desktop. So rather than typing this out on my phone, let's type it out on the desktop. Please uh, make it look more class, classy. Add a chandelier. I don't know how to spell chandelier. You'll have to excuse me for that. And let's see what this comes up with. Oh, and it's done. Let's have a look. <laughs> It is classy. <laughs> the chandelier is very nice. Mwah. I love it how they've changed the pictures out. Uh, the pictures of uh, <laughs> that I've got there, changed them out to be nice classy pictures of bottles of wine and coffee because that's classy. So there we go. That's what uh, my set would look like if uh, it looked more classy. Okay, now I know. And uh, while I'm here, I might as well show you this as well. So this is the convex dashboard that every convex project comes with. And just in case you're interested how much this costs to run all of this, I have some logs here from the convex when it uh, when it ran this classy one. Let's see, how much did it cost to run this? It cost 6,240 output tokens, which estimates to be about 0.25 uh, dollars, which is about so it's 25 cents. So each time we generate one of these images, 25 cents. I think worth it for a, a touch of class, I'd say. All right, so this is pretty cool in my opinion, but uh, I now wanna take you through how easy it is to build something like this. So um, let's go through the code. Okay, so the very first step I did was hop into Chef. It, uh, If you're not familiar with Chef, it is a uh, new vibe coding tool from Convex and it allows us to uh, put in a prompt and 
very quickly generate a full working app with backend and auth and everything. So uh, I smashed in my prompt into here. And then a couple of minutes later, we, we had uh, my first working version of the app. So I started out by writing a fairly detailed prompt. Um, I'm by no means a prompt writing expert, but I find by writing, by giving it like a, a high level perspective, a few pages that I want and a few kind of main states that I expect the app to be in, I get a fairly consistent result generally from the AI. So once it went through that, a few minutes later, I had a working app. Now, I told it initially not to do the AI uh, part as um, I just wanted just to mock it out and just see where we get to with that, with just the convex part. Um, and then, I mean, I could have continued on with like the prompting to get AI part working here and directly in Chef, but I decided I want to uh, download the code and then eject out and then continue on with it inside Cursor where I would have more control over the code in my, my IDE tools. So let's hop into Cursor now and let's have a look at some of the code. So I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I'm not going to bore you, um, but let's have a look at uh, the schema for our Convex database. So we can see we have uh, some auth tables. Um, the app does have auth, just email and password for now, but it will be easy enough to add other auth in there if we wanted to. And then we only have one other table here, which is our images table. So uh, each image has a user ID that it's owned by. Uh, and then we have this status here, which is a union of objects. And if you're not familiar with Convex, this is um, this is a good time to mention that Convex's database is really nice and it lets you do something like this because it's, it's kind of like a document database, but it's kind of like a relational database at the same time, except you can define the structure of your fields um, with unions, which means it makes it really easy to adapt your schema over time as the requirements change. Right, anyways, let's move on to the good stuff now. Let's uh, let's see how the image is actually generated by AI. So uh, this is the generate decorated image function. It's an internal action and on convex actions are effectual, which means that they can run for, I think, 10 minutes, uh, but they can't directly access the database. They have to go via mutations or queries to do that. And so we at the, the top here, we have some arguments. So we're gonna take in the image ID, which is the image from our database. We're gonna take the original image um, which is an object It's going to have a URL and a storage ID. And then we're going to take the prompt of what the user, how the, what the user wants to do to decorate the image. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is going to fetch the image from the storage uh, medium. So we're loading that. And then we're going to convert that into a file type, which is what the OpenAI uh, SDK needs. And then we are going to uh, call the uh, OpenAI SDK edit function with the new image model. Oh, I should just mention here that you need to, uh, to be able to use this new model, um, you need to be able to verify your organization. So this involves doing a kind of ID check. I guess OpenAI is worried about deep fakes uh, with this model, uh, which they weren't with previous models. But um, yeah, you have to do that first before you can use this model. So continuing on, once we get our result back, presuming it does an error, we, uh, we're we gonna look at some of the uh, usage here. So I'm kind of, I wanted to know roughly how much this is costing. And so I'm logging out some uh, of the logs and I'm using the cost, which is $40 per million output tokens, which is the most expensive part. Uh, and it works out to be about 25 cents per image, but you can up here change the size of the model. I've currently got it set to uh, auto at the moment because I've not provided it, but you can change the size, which does change the cost. And then after I've done the usage part, we scroll down, I uh, convert the output uh, base64.json into a buffer, and I'm then going to resize it and convert it into a WebP image. I do this because the image that OpenAI gives back is like two and a half meg in size, which is not great. Uh, experience for users on the front end. So I want to resize it and make it a bit smaller. I'm not sure why OpenAI doesn't do this for us. It would be nice. Um, but as a result, because I'm using Sharp library to do the resizing, I have to do this use nose um, directive on this convex action, which means that this is all going to run within a node context as opposed to a um, V8 isolate context. 
So, and once we've done that, I just call this mutation finish generation, uh, passing it the image ID, decorated image in the prompt, and then it just updates the database uh, for us. And that's it, that's it basically for the bulk of the application. If we wanna just hop over to the client side quickly, I won't go through this in too much detail. It's a, it's a basic Vite application um, built with Tailwind, as you can see, uh, using my favorite routing library called TypeRoot. Um, type roots here we go and yeah it's it's pretty basic um the if you, i won't go into it the source code is uh down below in the description if you want to go through it uh, in more detail on your own time all right so i think i'm gonna leave it there um i hope you found this interesting and i can like i said before i can see so many different possibilities for this new image model it's so good and the ability to edit images like this oh my god it's it's we are living in an exciting time if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments down below or find me on Discord. I'm always keen to hear back from you guys. And if you did like this video, you should probably check out this one where I built a different app that you control entirely with your voice. Uh, it was pretty cool. And I even roped in Jamie, uh, my boss, to go through it with me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, cheerio, bye.